39 minutes after the hour, Bulldog and Kevin, and we want to welcome back a wonderful lawyer. We had her on the show once before, and Angela D. Giampolo, good morning. Good morning. I thought I was going to be in Palm Springs next time we did this. Uh, well, see, well, <laughs> we hope so well, next time for sure. Wait for it to cool off just a little yeah. bit, Angela, okay? <laughs> But very a- true. Very a- true. Angela's a Philadelphia-based lawyer, and she founded uh, phillygaylawyer.com. And we happened to talk about this case yesterday because every day we try and cover, as best we can, a transgendered issue. Mm. Yeah, because Kevin I, and I have decided. Chills. Christine was great. Now, now, you want to tell the story? I know Christine is a 48-year-old transgendered woman that needed the surgery, right? Sure. So, absolutely. So, Christine... Uh, for the last year and six months, uh, has been putting together her file, you know, dotting I's, crossing T's, getting all of the things in order that you need in order to undergo the vaginoplasty. So uh, therapist letters, all of her medicals, what have you. A year and six months putting this together. Right. And and the day came where literally it was Monday, Monday at 6 o'clock, the parents who she's estranged from and literally had never seen them for the last two years until court, basically. And they drove from Ohio. Christine is from South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. And they drove from Ohio and and ran into the hospital, tried to stop the surgery or or the pre-op procedures that were going on. They were taken out by police and and said, you'll hear from my lawyer, famous last words. Right. And sure enough, we were hit with an injunction, a petition. Wednesday, we went to court. After brutal five or six hours of, of offensive questioning and, and testimony, ultimately Christine was victorious. The judge dismissed, the, and I should back up, the petition, right. and this is the crazy part, as a 48-year-old woman, the parents' petition was to declare her incapacitated, <laughs> uh, incompetent, unable to make decisions for herself, and but for her, her mental health issues, uh, of which we stipulated that when she was living as a man, she you know, used drugs and was an alcoholic and was depressed right. and had suicide ideations. But that's because she was living as a man. I right. mean, this isn't brain surgery, okay. you know? So okay. so she won. We won. She had surgery yesterday. Oh, good. One thirty. Yeah. So there, there's there's another woman in the world. That's always a good thing. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she's recovering. Uh, I talked to her right before she went in. The doctor said, I'm going to give her the nicest China I've ever made. Wow. <laughs> I was like, and, and I told her, that's a T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> you need to make that a T-shirt. That should be a T-shirt. Yeah, well, it, right. it, it's fresh and ready. Yeah. It's the best vagina exactly. ever made. That Now, you see, I understand that case. And I I, I, I'm, I was very happy to read that, you know, Christine wanted that she was going to have the operation. That I understand. But can I throw out another story we did this week to you? Sure. A high school senior. A, a boy, a guy, high school senior in Missouri, decides he's a girl. He comes to school. He comes out. He, he He's dressed like a girl. He's wearing what, I no offense, it looked like his mother's mop. The worst wig ever. The worst wig ever. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he wants, he goes out for girls' sports, and he wants to change in the girls' locker room. Now, he's never taken a hormone. He's never done mm-hmm. anything to become a woman. So the girls protested, and I don't blame them. Right. What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, I don't know enough okay. about the situation if he were, uh, or if he were rather attempting to, to to mock or or if the intent was true. And if the intent were true, because again, forget what I tell people who don't understand, and I feel like a lot of LGBT people don't understand the T, and that we shouldn't even call it LGBT, right? Because the the T struggle is so its own struggle. We've never spent money on it. We don't spend time on it. And we kind of gloss over it and say we don't understand it, but yet they're a part of – if they're not a part of our community, where are they? And that's why they they commit suicide at a rate of 47% uh, wow. to straight counterparts. Wow. 91% of trans people uh, report being harassed at work. Trans people are four times more likely to make under $10,000 a year despite being more educated Christine was college educated. She's unemployed right. because she looks the way she does. Quite frankly, she's unemployed. She has a college degree. She runs three rental properties of, of her own. That's her, her income. Right. But but trans people have their own struggle because nobody gets it. And so, but it's not for us to get. So if this kid is being authentic, because, you know, I mean, 
and I don't see why she wouldn't be authentic. But when you're a kid and you're just figuring this out about yourself, oh, have the balls, no pun intended, yeah. have the balls to go into school and do that. Christine was 12 when she became an alcoholic because she just mm. started drinking to numb. She would lock herself in, in her bathroom overnight right. and, and drink JMO while putting on makeup. You know, wow. and, and so at 12 to 13, she developed a massive alcohol problem. And, and instead, this 14, 15-year-old kid right. is going into school with a bad dress and, and a wig. I don't think the parents are helping hmm. her figure out her wig. So right. she's left with being a kid with no income and having to find vintage clothes and, and a wig at a Halloween store. Okay. I mean, I feel bad. Okay, well, forget how how, how she looked, okay? I'll, I'll get mm-hmm. – what about – the girls feeling uncomfortable getting undressed in front of her. Right, because they're still... Get uh... over yourselves. Get over yourselves. Uh, Come on. I mean, I don't I know, college, though, but he still I has male body parts. parts. I mean, he like... A, I mean, let's be real, people. First of all, think about how this person feels. So, first of all, there's not a man who would fake being a woman to get into the dressing room to look at boobs. Let's be real. Okay. Uh-huh. okay. I would agree uh-huh. with that. I mean, you could go on the okay. internet. Everything is there. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So why would you make a, a mockery of yourself, dress as a woman, to get into the, the woman's locker room? All parents, you think that, that uh, trans people coming into schools and having gender neutral bathrooms and what have you is going to lead to sexual assault. Any guy who wants to rape a girl is going to do it regard- and not dress and drag to do it. They're just going to do it. How many so, transgender cases do you handle? Do you handle a lot? Is it more than we would ever imagine? More than you would ever imagine. I mean, the doctor who did Christine's surgery has done 1,017 gender reassignment surgeries. Wow. There's almost three a week. And this is just here in New Hope. This what? This is in our backyard. Three really? a week? Three a week. Yep. That's why they call it New Hope. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. You say that because a lot of us just don't understand this whole thing. We're we're conf- it's just kind of like one of those things. It's like what? Like I just don't get it. But I'm still kind of like you know, if you have like male body parts, you probably shouldn't be in a female locker room. That's just kind of the way I feel. Like as a gay Kevin man, is old school. Yeah, I know I'm old school and I'm a gay dude, well, whatever. But I just don't get it's, it. Like it's old school. It's not just old school. It's also very American, right? Oh. Like I mean, I've I played overseas. I played basketball. You don't know how tall I am, but despite being okay. five feet, <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay. I played basketball overseas at Finland, Sweden, and our U.S. national team. When we were in Estonia, there was just a spigot, literally on the side of a wall. Right. And and we would shower, and we would shower, and there'd be people holding up towels all around, you know, the person creating a wall, basically right. around uh-huh. the woman showering, and the the Estonian national team was butt naked. Staring at us, right. showering. Like, what is your because, problem? Because it looks so weird. Exactly. <laughs> right. you know, oh, okay. Because we're so prudish as a society. So, that makes again, a lot of sense, well, though. Angela, it is let very me American. Tell you, uh, you know, Kevin talks about bath. Kevin can't use a bathroom if there's a window. I'm so very he, modest. I have he, to go to the bathroom where there's no windows. <laughs> so, I mean, hello. I mean, but I, he, okay. we're just confused by it. That's what all, confuses really. me. Well, I, and, and, here, and let me make one last point. Okay, so please. You to make it around, around sports and locker rooms. Right. Because mm-hmm. everyone says, you know, I don't have issues. So, forget the trans. Okay. I don't have issue with Michael Sams. I don't have issues with right. you know da 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 being gay. But does he? I mean, in the locker room, having a gay guy in the locker room, I, know. I don't know. Yeah, you it's, know, it's ridiculous. And yeah, it's ridiculous. So for myself as an athlete, and even though you know, I was out, there's when you're in the locker room, you're you're in the zone. Right. Right. Like I don't even remember, even though I've, I've grown up in locker rooms as an athlete and around naked women all the time running showering, going to do this. My head was down. I'm in the zone. I'm right. getting my head in the right. game. There's like no I sexual like, thoughts or anything right. going oh on. My you're, God. Just, you're you in a zone. You're right. That. Yeah, you're, but- you're totally in the zone. And as far as, you know, being in fifth grade or, or junior year or whatever, you know, that kid is probably so self-conscious mm-hmm. and so scared and so just, you know, going through her own stuff. She's not looking around. And I'm sure since she does, she's aware of her male parts, I'm sure she's going into the bathroom, you know, into the stall to do certain changing. She right. just feels more comfortable. Christine even said on the stand, she, you know, I, I really, I need this, Your Honor. I need this. And it sounds stupid, but A, I want to, she runs 25 miles a week. She's like, I want to run a marathon and I want to compete in the woman's 
right. health division. And I want to feel comfortable in the women's locker room, and I want them to feel comfortable with me. She knows that women aren't all the time comfortable. Her gym has accepted her. The locker rooms, right. you know, has have accepted her. But but here she is, forty year old woman, saying, "I want I want to feel comfortable right. in the women's right. locker room. I want to feel comfortable swimming." You know, and, and and so of course, her being there is exuding some uncomfortability onto other people. But but this is life or death for her and for trans people, truly. I mean, it, and I just I, I I I have my own radio show where I'm the host, and I literally just walked How out of our you. media. <laughs> yeah. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. Hello, this is the only this is the only radio show in the country. This is yeah. the- <laughs> You put a new perspective on it, though. Yeah, and you said, uh, Angela, you said, we're talking with Angela D. Giampolo, who's uh, a Philadelphia-based phillygaylawyer.com, phillygaylawyer.com. And real quick, because we have to go, but Mm -hmm. when you said it's about America, I Mm -hmm. mean, when I went to school, you know, horse and buggy, we we had gym (laughs) three three Mm -hmm. or four times a week, and you had a shower. And uh, it Mm -hmm. wasn't a sexual thing. Now they don't have, the kids don't even shower anymore. Yeah, Right. Right. I mean, because everybody right. needs privacy, so they stay. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. I, I mean, it, I don't know where we're going with this. It's not that this is not normal. Okay, this but the only normal. thing about transgender, and I think I said this to you last time, because Kevin and I are out. We're gay men. We're comfortable. And I think mm-hmm. the transgender is a real issue, and, and certainly they should have rights. I just think everything is being thrown at the country so quickly. That it's going to take well, a while. Especially Caitlin. I mean, look what's going on in Kentucky. Finally, they got marriage licenses. That's a lot for people to swallow. And then, uh, yeah, we have Caitlin on every. Yeah. I, I love, I love right. Caitlin Jenna. Well, well <laughs> yeah. let's let's do this. Let's yeah. plan on my coming back, and we only talk about just not a trans topic per se, or right. or about Christine or about Caitlin, but but about transphobia, about why this is difficult. Okay. And just focus on that, and not gloss over it with a topic, and then kind of touch on the fact that. We don't understand it. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, really, it is. We'll get in touch with you, and we'll just talk about transphobia and why we all, most people have transphobia. And, uh, you know, it's a changing, it, the world is changing really quickly. Yes. You know? but, but I think it helps normalize straight people that to know right. that LGB people also don't get it. And so this is really, a, they have their own phobia. This is trans. You're right. Yeah, okay. I totally don't get it. Right. So I would love to have yeah. you come back on and like try to like put well, things more in perspective. And I prob- we'll have you back on before Donald Trump becomes president. How's that? <laughs> 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 Thanks, right, Angela right. G- and Paul. Have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Yes. You too. Okay. Right, we'll right. talk to you soon. Take Thanks. care. Bye bye. Bye. I like Angela. A lot. Yeah, she's, she's very awesome. smart. She's very smart. And, you know, she's made a lot of really really great points there. I mean, really. Yeah. I mean, you know, we make fun, and, yeah. but I mean, it, I know it's a true. Well, as, I as, do as the as the spokesperson for the trans. Trans, <laughs> transgender people in America. I kind of want to talk to her a little bit about that that dude though that got released from jail eight years before his sentence was up because he oh, was yeah, being picked on. Yeah, and that's because that really pissed me off. It's like, oh really? Like you should be? You're a criminal, whether you're transgendered or not. You're a criminal. You should be in jail. This coming from when he was nine years old, he was egging people's houses, uh, <laughs> and I. 